Yo, what's going on guys? It's Seabrev. Welcome to another episode of What Would Brev Do? The series where we play a whole ranked seasons game from start to finish and I talk about what's going on in my head the entire time. Uh, today the lineup is all new guys except for Peraza. Uh, we're trying out some new cards. I'm really excited about trying, uh, namely Granderson here in left field. And we've been messing around with a new Takashi Soriano, who I'm having a blast with. We also got Jimmy Fox at catcher and Takashi Delgado at first base. Just trying to mix it up, use some different cards for these videos. Uh, but pitching-wise, we're continuing our series of one of these episodes for every Future Stars pitcher. Today is going to be Reed Detmers. Uh, not really sure how to use this card. Kind of awkward. Three-fourths of his off-speed pitches are basically the same speed. I do like the four-seam cutter speed differential, though, so I imagine we'll try to work off of that. Kind of going into this one blind. Don't really know how to pitch with Reed Detmers. We'll try to figure it out on the fly. We're at 817 rating so far in this new season. I think we are 6-1 or 5-1. Uh, we were at 840, and we took an L to end stream just before I started recording this one. Tough loss, but these things happen. The... Uh, Beginning of the season is always so sweaty, <laughs> especially now that the World Series cards are selling for multiple hundreds to thousands of stubs. So hopefully that bodes well for us making it through a whole nine innings and hopefully having a good gameplay for you guys. Uh, really excited about uh, Soriano and Fox specifically in this lineup, though. And we are taking on a parallel for, for Roy Halladay. Been seeing Roy a lot recently for some reason uh, i think our lineup's pretty good against him honestly forgot to mention too we have mauer on the bench that's just late game protection for jimmy fox mostly uh, but we'll see what we can make happen with these new cards man roy halliday and his uh huge hits per nine versus granderson and his lack of contact here <laughs> definitely gonna see some pitches to start this one off uh i think i've done a couple of these episodes hitting off roy but uh, in general, typical sinker cutter guy. You're going to see a lot of sinkers arm side, a lot of cutters glove side. And he's just has great control. He's going to dot you all game. So you got to make sure you're not swinging at quality strikes that he throws early in counts. And I think working counts against guys with good control is usually pretty good in general. Uh, I was super late on that cutter, so as far as his timing, trying to figure me out, he might think I have a slow bat, so I might try to speed it up here. And we did speed it up. Granderson with the pimp job <laughs> into the third, oh, almost the third deck, the second deck for a leadoff homer. That was gorgeous. But yeah, we were so late on that cutter, I figured he'd try to get us with some form of sinker or cutter. Uh, since the only information he really had at that point in the at-bat was that we were late on a pitch. so uh, Roy also, in general, one of his biggest weaknesses, in my opinion, is his off-speed isn't that great. The splitter's pretty good, but that's about it, right? You can't really get people out on the curveball. So uh, keeping a fast bat against Roy, I think, is generally a pretty good approach. Does this get over his head? Unfortunately, no. Late side of good. Uh, Soriano had, according to the community, and I generally agree, a pretty slow swing last year. So, especially right on right with a sinker thrower, you can expect to see a lot of sinkers inside with a guy like Soriano. Unfortunately, we were just a little bit late on the one that he threw. Uh, but yeah, against Roy Halladay, keeping a decently fast bat, just not getting beat velocity-wise by sinker and cutter, I think is generally strong. And we get another... <laughs> <laughs> disrespectful no doubter here two solo shots from the lefties to start off the game and they have thrown their bats a total of probably 50 feet that's amazing <laughs> the all pimp job team dude insane uh, I'm having fun we're having fun haven't had to pitch yet at Coors with Reed Detmers, so that's probably why we're having fun. Uh, again, could try to go inside on us with the fast stuff here. That was actually a really good pitch by him, and I got bailed out. Good compliment there. You guys see me throw all the time, like, belt high away splitters to get exactly that type of swing. Usually it's a rolled over ground ball. I was lucky to get under that one. And I imagine this is a cutter now. Um... 
Both lefties so far, he started with up and in cutters to start the at-bat. So that's kind of what I'm looking for. Looks like he's mixing it up pretty well here, though. Yeah, three sinkers away. How weird. Lucky to foul that. Keeping a fast bat, though. That's the approach. Just not getting beat by the velocity because his off speed isn't that great. We did not get beat by that velocity either. 4 nothing here in the top of the first. I'm praying this guy sticks around. <laughs> All three of our left-handed hitters have gone deep, and he did not stick around. That's the opposite of sticking around. Well, it's early enough in the video. We can just hop into the next game. Hopefully we find someone quickly. <laughs> that was... A little extra nugget for you loyal watchers. <laughs> a little five-minute master class on hitting Roy Halladay. God, I hope we find another match here soon. Also, I guess let me know in the comments if you really don't like that I left that part in. Obviously, when someone quits this early, I typically just stop recording and move on to the next game. But that half inning was a clinic. And also kind of hilarious with the bat flips, so let's do it, dude. Game number two, Reed Detmers is 1-0 and hasn't thrown a pitch. Best pitcher in the game. And now we get directly the opposite <laughs> game. <laughs> super Fractor Randy Johnson, and every single person in this guy's lineup is Super Fractored except for... His supercharged of Brian Reynolds, which he's just using for the next couple days, I'm sure. This is the ultimate God Squad. And we get a little Hall of Fame action against Super Fractured Randy Johnson. This will be a game for sure. Um, hitting against Randy is obviously a lot of patience. Um, he's the best pitcher in the game by, so, by such a wide margin. Uh... Whatever you can do to get that pitch count up and just pray that you can get him out of the game by like the 6th or 7th inning is really what you got to do. Uh, he's just so hard to hit in general, especially on the higher difficulties. My main approach against him is obviously patience, but just trying to never get beat by the fastball. Uh, if you let them beat you with fastballs with Randy, it's going to be a long game. Um, so I try to take it away early. If that means I have to sell out and look foolish on off speed, then so be it. But uh, if you can't take the fastball away, they're just going to abuse you with it the whole game. So try to make a statement early and, you know, just try to react to his off speed as you s can recognize it. But at the end of the day, it's obviously insanely hard to hit this card as it should be considering how many stubs he costs. <laughs> it's kind of crazy the Live Series High Diamonds haven't really come down in price yet. I think this time last year, the Live Series was much cheaper than it is right now. Maybe we'll get a flash sale or something soon. And I got barely beat by a fastball there, but I think we're hitting it pretty well. We haven't taken just a straight-up late swing on it yet, and it seems like our opponent... Wants to feature the fastball quite a bit, so I think that bodes pretty well for our approach. Uh, we'll just try to keep trying to take it away. I just said try to keep trying. <laughs> left on left is definitely difficult, though, because the slider slurve left on left is very nasty. Ah, there's a late swing. So we actually didn't have a great inning there. Three F8s uh, and the last two swings we took were not great for our approach. So sometimes you have an approach and you just don't execute it and that's okay. Uh, we just have to do our best to try to fix it and execute next inning. And I think we'll have a good opportunity to do so because after that inning he just threw with Randy. I am assuming we're going to see large amounts of heat for the next couple innings all right reed's kind of unique in one pitch and that's his sweeping curve uh sweeping curve in general is kind of a sketchy pitch to throw 
I almost wouldn't recommend it at all throwing against a righty, but left on left, it's kind of nice. Uh, you can try to front door it, and it's kind of hard to time up, and then you can also try to throw it low and away and get them to swing early on it. Decent compliment with the slider that he throws as well. Um, great fastball control. Wow, I like that par. This is kind of a scary pitch, though. He's up here battling. Let's try that sweeping curve down in a way. I want it just off the plate if I can have it there. That caught a little bit of the corner, but pretty much right where I wanted it. Great swing from our opponent, but just swung over the top. And our best defender in the infield makes the play. Things you love to see. Yeah, that's a perfect spot for that pitch. Good stuff. Uh, but yeah, with Reed, already just looking at his pitch mix and his break on stuff. This is an early swing. Hopefully I catch it. Good play, Curtis. That looks like he got screwed on that, but he was so early. He didn't, probably didn't deserve to hit that out. Um... I was coming into this game thinking I was going to feature four-seam cutter, which I think I still am, but uh, the break on his slider is actually pretty impressive. We might have a Kershaw situation on our hands where we throw the slider more than anything else and try to work off of that. We'll see. That was a good first inning for us, though. Also had pretty great control on everything I threw there. Once again, he's pumping the heat. We're trying to take it away. Approach hasn't really changed from inning number one. He's having a tough time throwing anything off speed in the zone for a strike, too, so that bodes well for our approach. And we're able to turn on it with Fox. That's why you get yourself a Jimmy Fox, dude. Solo shot to left field. That's how you go from not exiting, executing your plan to executing your plan. And we'll see if he starts to get off of the four seam now. And this is generally how my games against Randy try, how I try to make it go. Um, taking the four seam away super early and just making them think twice about throwing it. If I can get someone into a spot where they are spamming off speed with Randy Johnson, I have won. That is such a better situation to be in than someone who's mixing their pitch as well. So uh, it looks like we might have gotten there already with one swing. We'll see what he does 3-1 here. I'm going to take it. He did go four seam there. So behind in the count, made sure he got back in it. I don't know what he's going to throw here. That is smoked right at Frank. Pretty much a perfect swing. Just didn't get enough elevation on it. Hit it 108 miles an hour. And we are making it apparent what we're trying to do here. And you can already see the results. First pitch slurve to a righty. Haven't seen that one time from our opponent yet. And immediately we're getting into favorable counts from this. So if he was spamming off speed and we had this approach, sure, we might have looked foolish on a couple splitters or something. But we're really changing how he's pitching just by taking away the fastball. I know it seems obvious. I know especially for you guys on TVs, it's a lot easier said than done. But um Hopefully I'm able to display just why we do it, right? This inning is completely different than the first inning was, and it's 100% because we have had good timing on every four-seam fastball that he's thrown. And he, as a result, is completely changing how he's pitching to us. You can see how long he's taken between pitches here, too. I wonder if he's really struggling to figure out what to throw. Mm, was not expecting that one. Probably should have swung. Woo! Okay. That was lucky. Man, I was crushed too. Couple of unlucky outs this inning, but to be honest, I should have struck out looking on the pr pitch before, so can't be too upset making it out there. I imagine he'll go back to pumping heat here, actually, since, especially since we just crushed a slurve. Great pitch. Great mix-up. Tip your cap. Want to try to be semi-aggressive here, too, with the pitcher on deck. A home run's worth two. And if we get past this batter, the likelihood we get this runner in from first is very low. Oh. 
such a hard pitch to keep fair. Okay, 3-2, force play, two outs and the runner. There's no downside. And we hit it just late. The Laughing Mountain special. <laughs> Escobar, such a glitch, dude. That's that dead red quirk, man. It's so good, especially against Randy. Like, with the amount of fastballs you're going to see, dead red. You, you take swings like that and hit no doubters to the opposite field. It's wild. That's huge for the game. You pick a stadium like Laughing Mountain, those things are going to happen, too. So We are big happy, but it's only a three-run lead, and this dude has a huge god squad. So we need to stay within ourselves and not get too confident here. Only up three. 41 pitches through two, though, for Randy. I just hit a perfect, perfect with Reed Detmers in the gap. Hello. I was already talking as if this inning was over. <laughs> Talk about taking away the fastball, dude. What can we do with Granderson here, man? This has to be a slider or something, right? Hmm. I can't believe I just did that with Reed. That might be the best swing I've ever taken in my entire life. Oh my god. This is the best inning of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Did I deserve that one? Probably not, but the PCI is dead on the ball. Wow, Curtis Granderson with another pimp job, 121 power. This game has completely turned upside down. Just late on that one, too. What an inning, man. The Reed Detmers double pays off as we hit a no-doubter, the batter afterwards all of a sudden we're up five and this is absolutely a spot where our opponent's going to start pressing he might even be warming up the bullpen right now which is insane so because he is pressing this inning for sure and the game has really started to get away from him fast uh, he's going to see a lot of balls this inning i'm going to make him earn it if he's going to get on base if he wants to press with his hitters and give me free outs like that, I'm going to take him. I'm going to be super annoying on the mound. He, uh, he's, it's so hard to stay disciplined within yourself after an inning like that on the mound. I'm going to make him do it because I know what it feels like. And somebody spamming balls over and over and over, making you earn the walk after you just got shelled for five. Is near impossible, and so far he's not doing great at it. So our approach pitching-wise completely changed because of that inning as well. Let's throw something high but out of the zone and see if he likes it. The super uh, supercharged Brian Reynolds card is scary. <laughs> he's something like... 125, 120 versus righties right now or something. So thank goodness we had Reed on the mound, I guess. You can see, though, I'm never going to throw a sweeping curve to a right-handed batter. It's just not a good pitch. Still trying to feature the slider quite a bit, but still trying to figure it out myself as well. He might have been on that or just under it. I will take the out. And that's huge for momentum. He did not answer our five-run inning. And uh, we are back to work. Going to continue to take the fastball away from him. Good pitch. Those are the pitches he needs to throw to get me off this approach. Good sequence there, all in the same tunnel. Um, so yeah, like I said, when you're trying to take the fastball away, you're going to take swings like that looking foolish, but it's worth it in the long term for the approach. Fox again, that wasn't even a strike. He's two for two. I love Fox cards every year. <laughs> He's one of my goons. So is Hannes Wagner, who's coming in the next program, which is hype. 
problem handling it and putting a good swing on it that time. He's hitting us with a bit of rocking chair this inning. And we take the fastball away yet again. Our lefties are destroying the ball this episode, dude. What is this lineup doing, man? <laughs> Maybe this is the God Squad lineup. Insane, bro. 7 nothing against Super Fractured Randy in the top of the third. And he hits us with that one. Still sticking with our approach here. Although this pitch, I'm sure, will be off speed. Ooh, never mind. All right, we got away from our approach that at bad. That was my bad. Same approach here with, with Escobar as earlier in the game. Definitely want to try to put the ball in play here. Walk isn't very great for us, so... Sitting fastball, looking to do damage with that dead red quirk. And I think that's getting caught. Did not get caught. We'll hold up first here. And that's not going to get the run home, unfortunately. We could have maybe tried to push it, but I think we were out by quite a bit. And if this was a tournament game, I'd actually be pinch hitting here, as crazy as that sounds. Try to really put the nail in the coffin, but in ranks, no reason to burn through our bullpen just yet with this big a lead. Detmer's almost touched him up again. <laughs> Line out to center field. And decent end to that inning for him to try to get some momentum back, although he did give up another two-run bomb. Hendrick's going to run this down on the early swing. He is crushing baseballs and playing great defense. He's been one of the sleeper cards for me out of the future stars, honestly. Uh, Austin Hendrick has played out of his mind for me. Um, it's been mostly events, granted. Have not used him on Legend either, but he seems to have an incredible swing. I really, really like his card and just tons of pop. He's also insane if you get him super fractured. I know that's a huge time commitment, but he gets up to 90 speed and diamond defense in right with a super fractor. I want to talk about this guy's pinch hit here. So, uh, again, the point of these videos is not to... Uh, criticize our opponent or anything like that uh, but if you notice he's platooning Maurer and Fox and his only other righty on the bench is Cassianos um, so first of all I think a bit of a mistake if you're gonna pure platoon I would have a third righty here uh, maybe he wasn't planning on platooning this early but he just feels like he has to because he's down by so much that's definitely a possibility but anyway, this is such a low leverage situation to burn your last right-handed bat, especially the best right-handed bench bat in the game with Cassianos. Uh, burning him bottom third, two outs, nobody on is pretty bad, in my opinion. I know he doesn't have a ton of options here, um, but I do think even though it would be a lefty matchup, lefty-lefty matchup, uh, either Devers or Delgado is a better pinch hit long-term than Cassianos is here because now he's pigeonholed and doesn't have a right-handed bat on the bench for the entire rest of the game and he is using his best right-handed bench bat in a situation where best case scenario he's going to narrow it down to a six run lead so that is not ideal by any means um, it's such a desperate pitch hit in a way that I almost feel like he might quit if he doesn't uh, come through here <laughs> I don't know we'll find out I don't want to throw a sweeping curve versus a righty. Never mind. Um, yeah, it's it's very possible he's outy if he doesn't come through here. We'll see what he does. Maybe I should throw him a cookie so he doesn't quit. <laughs> Big brain plays. We're able to get him three perfect innings for Reed. We will see if he sticks around. Down seven with six bullpen innings staring him down. If he does stick around, we need to try really hard not to get complacent, too. This is still a very losable game, especially with how good this guy's team is. He might have quit. It seems like a very long loading screen, and he is gone, so... How long are we in the video? 25 minutes sounds about perfect to me. 
Uh, you guys got to see a couple clinics put on there. Oof, he was 894. <laughs> Ouch, man. Uh, yeah, that was maybe some of the best hitting we've had in any episode so far this year. Sorry I didn't get a feature read too much. He did technically go 2-0. Uh, we threw three innings with him. Uh, three perfect innings. I will say from my brief, using him uh, in those three innings, I think his slider is actually his best pitch. And if you've seen my Kershaw videos in the past, I would try to pitch that way with him. Uh, I think because they're the same speed too, uh, working the slider and cutter together could be super strong. It's a lot harder to do that versus right-handed hitters because cutters inside to righties are pretty terrible uh but sliders inside to righties with this card is pretty good so maybe left on left try to feature slider cutter together um and then pitching against righties try to throw sliders inside and work the changeups away and the cutters away uh that's my brief synopsis but i hope you guys enjoyed the video uh i think next episode i'm just gonna keep the same lineup because that lineup does nobody deserves to get benched after those two games uh, and I hope you guys learned something about my approach against Randy, too. Anyway, this outro is getting way too long. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. We'll see you next time.